networking is a topic that I've become very passionate about. And today I had a chance to speak with uh, an audience who shares many of the connections that I have with this issue. Human trafficking is a crisis that is often perceived as distant and foreign. Despite its magnitude, it is difficult to believe that it exists. And many people don't consider the fact that it might have an effect on their lives and on the society we live in. But today I want to explain to you that human trafficking is very much a personal issue for every single one of us. A despicable crime is occurring as we speak. It is an attack on Ukraine and on vulnerable populations across the globe. It targets our generation and destroys the lives of people just like you and me. It is detrimental to the moral standards of the world we live in. I want to address this topic in further detail and share with you the work of our organization. I hope to leave you with the belief that you too can make a difference and you can start today. We are witnessing a modern day <coughs> slave trade of epic proportions. It is, this is not an over dramatization, it is a fact. It is difficult to determine exactly how many people are living in slavery today. But the most conservative estimates that I have come across are approximately 800,000 people. This is from the US Department of State. And uh, the highest es estimate that I've come across is 12 million. Next to drugs and arms, human trafficking is the third most profitable industry in the world. It most commonly involves forced labor or prostitution, but people can be enslaved in many different ways. Traditionally, it has involved people being transported across borders, uh, but a more expanded definition is now being accepted. For example, child soldiers in Uganda are victims of human trafficking. Women who undergo forced abortions by people who traffic the fetal remains for research or the cosmetics industry are victims of human trafficking. A child being sent out to beg on the streets has been trafficked. For those of you who saw Slumdog Millionaire recently, those uh, children in India who underwent forced crippling in order to make more money when they begged, this was a common, common example. Organ trafficking is among one of the most horrific businesses ever to exist. In all of these cases, people are recruited, enslaved, exploited, and then discarded or killed. Human trafficking, which is no less than slavery, truly encompasses the greatest human rights abuses of our time. And the slave trade is pervasive. It is international. It touches almost every nation on the, on, on the planet in some way, either as an origin, transit, or destination country. Approximately 70% of the people who are trafficked are women and girls, most of which fall trade to the sex trade. For this reason, I'm going to be focusing on sex trafficking today. They are often, often lured by promises of employment as nannies, waitresses, and maids abroad, only to find themselves forced into prostitution upon their arrival. As soon as they arrive, their travel documents are seized, and they are told that they must be, they're required to pay an, an enormous debt, which can never really be repaid. In what author Victor Malaric described in his book, The Natasha's The New Global Sex Trade, they go through what is called the breaking grounds. Shortly after being recruited, these women are beaten and raped repeatedly until they submit. Many are subjected to brutal humiliations if they refuse to obey their owners, or if they fail to make the required amount of money each and every day of the year, no matter what their state of health. These women can be locked up in prison-like conditions or they can be sent out into the streets and even integrated with non-trafficked women. But whatever the case, these women live in constant fear. They are terrified of attempting escape because traffickers have convinced them that the authorities are directly involved with the traffic, and often they are. Victims are told that if they go to the police, they will be arrested and jailed for being in the country illegally or for being involved in prostitution. And once they're deported, traffickers will be waiting back home to re-traffic them or punish them, especially if they have spoken to authorities. Victor Maller gave a, a, many examples of this, where women who were being deported requested that they be given safe passage home. They requested some sort of witness protection. These are people who even testified against their traffickers. Instead, they were deported. And an example of one girl was that she was deported back to Odessa, and the last she was seen was her arrival in the airport, The two men were there to pick her up and took her into a car and drove off, and that was all. So as soon as these women are used up, they are discarded, tossed into the street, and another shipment of girls comes in to replace them. Most of the women return home 
psychologically and physically shattered. They are labeled and stigmatized by the local population as whores. Many of them are infected with HIV and a host of other sexually transmitted diseases. A high percentage of them commit suicide. Stepping out of the sex trafficking arena for a moment, let me just point out that around 100,000 Ukrainians are trafficked across its border each year. That's a million people each decade. Think about the effects this can have on a country, especially given that the majority of these people are between the ages of 18 and 25. But who are these traffickers? Some are members of major organized crime rings, such as the Mafia or the Hells Angels, and others are small-time pimps who control anywhere from one to a dozen women or girls on the streets. But not all the pimps and traffickers are what you would typically think. Doctors, psychologists, teachers, and even cops have all been found trafficking women. Facilitators who make it possible for, tra for traffickers to do their work are all too often forgotten. Hotel staff, taxi drivers, the, monitor the monitors of Craigslist and magazines where traffickers advertise their victims. Sometimes facilitators are actively participating, other times they just don't make the effort to verify what is happening. Traffickers often act as modeling and employment agencies. They place enticing ads in newspapers, offering exciting, empl exciting employment abroad. They send headhunters into villages and towns in fancy cars. Often, these recruiters are formerly trafficked women, who have been told that they will be set free if they bring back two or, th or three fresh recruits. There have been countless examples of broken victims turning in their best friends, their sisters, even their children, in exchange for their, for their own freedom. 